The one thing that frustrates me more than anything else in the world of college football, it's not the transfer portal, it's not coaches leaving, it's not NIL, it is schedules. And if fans, people who really love the game are honest, they know that that is the biggest issue, is that there is not scheduling uniformity. And you'll have so many people that make excuses for their team. Oh man, they can play whoever they want in a non-conference, it's fine. It's okay to play eight conference games, only nine power five, cause it's a gauntlet. Well, how does a gauntlet work when your two best teams, if you're the SEC in Georgia and Alabama, haven't played each other until this season in damn near a decade? How does that work? How is it a gauntlet when you are not consistently putting the best matchups out? Because it's not about just championships, it's about the fans. It has to be fan-centric first and player-centric first. And that's not what happens. It's about getting to the pot of gold at the end as opposed to thinking that the pot of gold will actually be there if fans and players are put first. There are times when fans, Alabama fans have been criticized for not showing up to the games or leaving early. Well, who wants to see you play the Citadel three times in the non-conference, put better matchups out and fans will stay. And guess what? Some of them you might lose and it will be okay. And this is the thing that rubs me completely the wrong way and pisses me off about the SEC. Cause you have Georgia who just changed their schedule and they're not gonna be playing UCLA in 2025. And how does this make any sense? Now on the UCLA side, at least they added Utah back, which is another Power 5 game and a game that matters to their fans. And that'll go a long way to help the Bruins beat the, you ran to the Big Ten to escape the Utah stuff. <laughs> we'll see if USC ever does the same thing. Just saying. And before Georgia fans jump down my throat, I'm not saying that this was 100% on you. It wasn't reported what the reason was that the game was changed up. But the thing that we point out is, is that they added Marshall. And for Marshall fans, I'm not dumping on your school. This is gonna be an incredible opportunity for your players, because if they can hang in their individual matchups, then they'll get the same quality tape in front of NFL scouts and boost their potential to play in the pros. And they'll also get tape in front of other power four coaches who are looking to upgrade their roster. So it actually might not be all good for Marshall fans, but at the end of the day, this is an awesome opportunity for the Thunder and Herd to go to Athens and get a chance to test themselves but we know they're gonna get killed we've seen these rosters you know it i know it and every college football fan on earth knows that this is an exponentially worse game in terms of potentially being competitive than georgia at ucla and for georgia fans saying that they'd rather have another home game than travel across the country anyway I get it, but wouldn't you rather face competition that's going to get you better prepared for the inevitable college football playoff run? Don't you want to see a game that will at least be competitive for a while and, dare I say, you might actually lose if you don't play your best. I mean, isn't that what fans really want? Everybody knows where I stand. I'm a college football fan through and through, and I know that you are if you're watching this channel. So why on earth don't we want to our teams, the teams that we love, to face a little bit of adversity? With a 12-team playoff for the next two years, and then 14 after that, you're going to have plenty of margin of error to be able to lose a game. So that's even more opportunity to schedule great games for you and for me, the fans. Do we really need our premier college football brands making moves to ditch their meat and potatoes and load their metaphorical plates with cupcakes? No, we don't. And consider this, as a premier brand in college football, doesn't it help your team to get out to Los Angeles where some of the best high school football players in the country reside, where you wanna have an even bigger foothold in? I know SEC fans at this point, just feel like I'm picking on them about their scheduling practices like I always do, and that the West Coast bias is just in me. No, it's just me being consistent. I say it about anybody who does not schedule well. Look at Ohio State's non-conference this year. It's embarrassing. You are better than that, especially when you know that year in and year out, you're going to be one of the top teams in the country. Tough scheduling is one of my bedrock values as a college football fan. 
as a commentator and as a former player. And people who played this game know that feasting on cupcakes does nothing to prepare you for the games that actually matter. Do you think I want Oregon playing Boise State this year? I mean, it's not a cupcake because we're 0-3 lifetime against the boys in blue, but I still rather have Notre Dame, Texas, or Florida State on the schedule, even though that means, oh my God, we could lose. It's okay. The college football fan in me wants to see great games more than anything else. But yes, I want my team to win. And it's not my fault that the SEC wants to pretend like an eight game conference schedule just means more. If it meant more, you'd play more. Now the SEC is in the process of trying to absorb enough schools to make college football at least a two team super league. And even if they do pull that off, I have no doubt in my mind that they'd still be making excuses to have their best teams only facing off in a conference play every four years so they'll keep scheduling ding dong tech in mid-november let that sink in